And welcome to Pulp Mythos. I'm Brian here with Spencer and Larry, and we're going to be discussing the first two episodes of WandaVision uh, from Disney+. Plus. If you've not hit the sub button, do so. We're going to be reviewing this every single weekend. Lots of other content on the channel. Check it out. And we love interacting with uh, the listeners through the comment section, so uh, be sure to leave a comment. So, yeah, uh, just initial reactions. You know, the, these two episodes, I mean, definitely different. <laughs> Um, the, you know, clearly artistically the decision was made to specifically in the first episode to basically recreate those old school sitcoms like Mary Tyler Moore, I Love Lucy, Dick Van Dyke show, stuff like that. So what did y'all think about that? Bewitched. Exactly. Um, so from that point of view, what, what did you guys think initially? What was your, uh, I liked it. I didn't love it, but I did enjoy it. What did you guys think? I, I did love it. Like it, it was, you know, the the Star Wars they did the Star. Well, I don't know why the hell I said it. Like the the Star Wars, <laughs> <laughs> the Star Wars. <laughs> like you were fifty when that came out. You're an old man that barely knows about Star Wars. <laughs> you know how they do in the Star Wars? <laughs> well, it's like the North Face. It's like yeah, you got that the 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 North Face jacket. But they um, <laughs> I I really did enjoy it. They the throwback. But there's still a mystery to it, too. There was, and we've talked about it before, uh, Brian, there, there's an episode of Supernatural where they end up, and I don't remember what caused them to do it, but they were bouncing from, like, sitcom to sitcom. And this is kind of what it reminded me of. Uh, it, and that was one of my favorite Supernatural episodes of all time. It was super funny. But this, the way it was formatted and everything, I think what they're trying to set up is not necessarily House of M, uh, from the comics, but showing how powerful Wanda is because in the, in the movies, they did a shit job showing how powerful she was. They did a good job kind of showing vision and what he could do, but they basically just had her shooting little red circles out of her hand. She can warp and change reality. So for her in this show, them starting it like this, to me, is trying to lead us to the point where they're showing us how strong she is, what she's capable of. And I think this will lead into other Marvel properties, but it makes me super excited to... I I enjoy the creative direction they took to show us what I was saying, the powers of Wanda. I agree with that. You know, it's, it's one of those things, uh, like you said, one of my gripes with the movie was that you show Scarlet Witch, like you said, just shooting red circles. And I'm like, there's so much more that she can do than that. Yeah, it's super vague, you know, until we, we get to the point in the comics where you see that she can outright warp reality. And I, and I think that if she wasn't there previously, this is them taking her there. And, uh, you know, we, which to which kind of ties into the ending of each episode, you know, where you hear like on a radio or something, someone saying, Wanda, who's doing this to you? And there are clear signs in the show and just from knowledge of the character in general that no one's probably doing this to Wanda. Wanda is doing this in order to just escape what her reality is, you know, that, you know, her whole world's kind of falling apart. You know, this person she loved died and she possibly just doesn't feel she fits anywhere, given that, you know, she was essentially raised in a, a very dank looking lab and, you know, probably has nowhere else to go and, you know, probably not the most social of people given, you know, her background. Uh, so she's probably invented her own reality from the only source of sense of normalcy she has, you know, which I think when we see her and her brother Pietro in, in their cells back in the original, well, not the original Avengers movie, but the second one, um, they're watching like these old box TVs. I believe the kids call them fat backs now. Yeah. I'm not like, I think y'all told me that. Called that. Yes. <laughs> You know, so it's her recreating a reality that's comfortable for her, the type of life that she'd want. And, you know, the question is, like, uh, is the vision really there? Or is it just her manipulating reality to make it feel like he's there? Or uh, what's what's going on? It, either way, we have hints that even if he's not, that these people are actual people. Because sometimes they fall out of whatever sort of spell that they're they're under or what whatever sort of hypnosis and they go and they seem to just freak out because they have no idea uh who they are or what they're doing 
you know, so it's 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 going to be very interesting to see whether this is her powers or whether this is a, a setup from someone or something else. And that's a good question. Is everyone a real person or created? Uh, the Vision has the Infinity Stone in his head. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of, you know what I mean? So the, these questions of what's real, what's not real, what, how is this exactly happening? Is this just a reality she's created? Um, you know, I, I am curious how, you know, the more we get into this, clearly sword is observing. We, we get m several scenes where you see the sword symbol, you see the helicopter that my immediate thought was that was a drone. I don't know. You, you chime in if you have an opinion on that. Um, just, you know, that, but it looks like a toy helicopter. You have the end of the first episode where somebody's watching on a screen, a little sword symbol in the corner sword being an offshoot of shield that deals with. Um, suppose it's supposed to be things from out of not of Earth, but who knows how they're going to do it in the MCU? Yeah, it looks like perhaps they're even taking like a you know anything otherworldly or potentially even supernatural. Maybe their mm. their purview now. But the yeah, what do you guys think? You know, some people have even speculated when does this take place? You know, I've seen that online. Is this post in game or is it not? You know, there's a lot of like debate and questions. We only got two episodes. We don't know the definitive answer of that. But last time we saw Vision, if this is after, uh, he's dead <laughs> and he's gone. Um, brutally killed by Thanos. And the stones are not... Well, well, Stark had um, I don't know what happened after that, so I don't think we know. Did they ever tell us after he snapped the, the second time? Well, they said they were destroyed. Okay. You know, so, but they're, they're destroyed in that place in time. Is, is yeah. what I was going to say there. Well, and she's able to, once again, control realities. Why would she not be able to essentially create sure. one? And, you know, if this is how she remembers vision being, because when they, you know, fell in love or in, and all that, she, he had that on his head. So that could just be her recreating him, how he was prior to that incident. Uh, that, I think that there's a lot to allude to. This is all her, but like you said, if I think she's be able, being able to control a lot of these people too, because like Larry said, it reminded me kind of of uh, the movie Get Out, where they're there for they're able to talk to the people and stuff, but they they almost their original selves are trying to get out. Mm, yeah, and mm. it felt like that because. Uh, when she was talking to, uh, what's her name, like Donna or Dana? So I, 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 I want you to elaborate on this too. Do you think that, okay, Wanda clearly could be doing this, but do you think someone is manipulating her or affecting her? Dot, you have Dottie, who seems something odd. Her neighbor, Agnes, there's something off with her. Um, Geraldine, we do know, because of spoilers, uh, Geraldine is actually Monica Rambeau. Um, I don't want to go too much into that cause the show hasn't yet. Um, but we know, we know that she's not Geraldine. <laughs> we do know that, um, she's actually a, a different character. So we know, so in other words, so there, there could be people there that are not who they seem or maybe, um, doing something to Wanda and she doesn't realize it. What do you think about that? Well, I think that when you, when the characters, speak just like when they're like for the kids and they're all in unison uh or geraldine when she was talking to her there was a couple times where she just kind of stared at her blankly for a minute um i don't remember what i think it was dotty is that the mom from that 70s show the, uh no no dotty was the one who was in charge of the event oh the, okay the blonde woman who was like everybody yeah. was afraid of her but you had the mom from that 70s show when that she was, was Mrs. Slapping. Hart. Mrs. Hart. Yeah, I I remembered the last name, but I when you mentioned all the first names, I didn't know if that was one of them. Uh, but you know, while her husband was choking, she was just sitting there like laughing, and it felt like a broken record. Like she like froze. So there's sev been several times where it's almost like programming glitches, or the people are glitching, and because of her, maybe her effect on reality, that it's messing with whoever is controlling them. So when they break like that, it's normally when something goes wrong with her. Uh, so 
if she realizes something or when the uh, girl cut her hand, like there's a lot of like little breaks that are causing it. It seems like when something happens to her, there is like a glitch in the matrix <laughs> and those people start to kind of bug out. So I don't know if that means that they're, if it's like a programming thing or if they're actually legit people and she's kind of interfering with whatever is manipulating them. Well, you correct me if I'm wrong. It seemed to happen most of the time when uh, something distressing was happening around, happening around Wanda or she was observing anything that, you know, seemed to upset what this reality is or, or, or seemed to be distressing, like the boss choking. You see the, uh, the sword guy or the aim guy, whichever he may be, you know, because he's in this little beekeeper suit. So maybe aim, like you were saying before, Brian, uh, well, before we started talking, like, but, uh, you know, so it may be that all this is happening only while Wanda is able to concentrate on this effect or while her current state isn't, isn't, uh, affected. And the, the beekeeper is even more important. You're right. Showing that Wanda is controlling things to a degree because she, well, she utters her famous word. She, no. Yeah. And it, and it reverses everything to before that scene. And so she definitely has power. It's just a question of how much is she, is she, there any outside force manipulating it or is it completely her? Is there, is there something more to, to what's happening? Um, what caught, what triggered it, you know, and, and to begin with, well, yeah. Vision and vision dying. <laughs> it, yeah. Well, yeah, it could well be that that's, that's it, you know, and it's, it's the sort of thing where we we've, we've known that, you know, Wanda, at least in the comics that she's, uh, She's had mental issues and problems just adapting to what her reality is in, in the past. And so, you know, it's it's not unusual that it, to think that perhaps this whole thing is her and that everybody involved would be like, uh, you know, all the people are either people who were in this town when she had her break, you know, and it's affecting a small little section of reality, like maybe just this town. And uh, like people like Monica Rambeau and uh, and... Agnetha or Agnes or whatever she's calling herself, you know, uh, that they are outsiders who came because of this, you know, like that, that Monica Rambeau, uh, is perhaps a, uh, or, uh, what would they call her in the episode? What was her name? Started with a J Geraldine Geraldine. Yeah. Or Geraldine is, uh, was perhaps a shield agent who, who, you know, well, not shield, but sword agent sword, that they sent. Yeah, yeah. That they Which makes up. sense, knowing who the character is, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, she was probably sent to figure out what's going on, and they thought that, and they didn't know that, you know, she'd get caught up in the uh, illusion as well, and I, I imagine that anyone who wanders into that area, you know, their reality changes to uh, to fit the narrative that Wanda has built for this town. You know, or at least that's my my assumption based on, you know, what's currently going on. Yeah, I, I think I look at it from clearly Wanda's doing it, but you need an antagonist. Now, she could be the antagonist, but there's going to have to be a conflict at some point that's going to come out. And what that is, who it is, what, what's going on, I, I don't know. Uh, we know that this, I don't think there will be a definite ending to this because they, they've been saying for years, this will lead directly into Multiverse of Madness. So then I was like, well, will Strange appear at the end of this? Well, you know, we'll, we know this is literally, you watch this, and then you watch that film, supposedly, and it goes right into it. So, I don't know. I, I like that they, I mean, I know that DC was been trying to beat them to the jump, but it's a comic book thing. It's not a DC or Marvel thing. The multiverse is their way of basically resetting shit all the time so that you can have the same characters. But, you know, the characters in the 70s, they would be, you know, 80 by now. So instead of just creating new characters, they just reset it. And now they're the same age they were 50 years ago. So yeah. it's not it's not a Marvel or DC thing, but for them to kind of tackle it this way is open it and opening it up and explaining it prior to the movies coming out so that that way to me this is this is brilliantly done because when you look at doing it this way yes you have to have disney plus for the movies to make more sense but it also gets rid of the need to basically have like a 40 minute intro to explain the movie 
Yes. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. A good point. <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah. I I agree. Uh, well, lay yeah, down it, all that groundwork. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely, and it uh, it puts you in a place where you know if it's you know not necessarily even a a reset, it could be the sort of thing where they're even saying you know it's like okay yeah we're doing a multiverse of madness and we're not resetting but every time you see a continuity era oh that's a different timeline <laughs> yeah well dc you know definitely has to uh, <laughs> with wonder woman in 84 they're gonna have to uh oh yeah they're gonna address to address that uh, but i think when you look at what marvel's done when they're you know the what is it falcon and winter soldier show that's coming uh there's a couple other shows you got the Black Widow movie that's coming. There's a lot of things that are coming out in the near future, but they're trying to use multiple properties. So it's not just, uh, you know, the theater. It is also going to be the Disney Plus. So this could be their way of introducing them together so that they can kind of interact with each other. Or this could be their way of separating them so that they basically have their own continuity and their own canon without interfering with one another. One thing we learned is uh, as powerful as vision is, a stick of chewing gum can take him out. <laughs> was, no, no I'm, I'm curious whether. I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know I don't, how to feel about that. I was a little annoyed by it. I, would it, I know it was for the comedy, but what did you think about that? I, I think that only works in that uh, sort of reality pocket that Wanda built and only for sitcom purposes, you know, because they have the little representation of the gears being gummed up. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think you can actually feed Vision a, a, a stick of gum and, you know, <laughs> mess him up like that. Yeah, I was like, what? Or well, at least I it, hope not. It looked like a video from Fallout. <laughs> it, yeah. A little, like the perks. That's what it reminded me of. I think, it, uh, so the, we, in the first two episodes, each episode had a different opening credits and the house had a different design, you know. It's like going to be moving through different decades of sitcoms. I'm assuming that's going to continue through the rest of the show. I think that's really cool and sort of fun, you know. Um, I think we'll get to a point. This is the only thing. We're already jumping to the 70s. Uh, it looks at the end of the second episode. So I'm wondering if, will do you guys think the whole sitcom thing will end halfway through the show and will be abandoned? Or will you think it'll continue through the whole show? I think... Like you just said, I think about halfway through, it'll end because it'll get closer to current day, and then they'll deal with the ramifications of whether she warped reality, someone was holding her hostage, whatever it was. I think by mid-season, it's going to be her dealing with the antagonist and finding out what's going on. But I'm looking forward to the Friends episode, the 90s <laughs> sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, you know, I, I think the same thing that we'll be like, we may get two more episodes of this at best, you know, of it primarily being the sitcom or or it being the sitcom. And then the sitcom portion of it is slowly being eroded away at, you know, we'll get a maybe a couple of more and then we'll deal with the antagonist. Heck, we might get hints of who the antagonist is next episode, which we got this episode for one. You know, we, we got a couple of hints, you know, like. uh like her friend Agnes is clearly, you know, Agatha Harkness, you know, which is a friend of hers. It will, at least in, in the comics, that's a friend of hers. So probably yeah. not your antagonist. And uh, we had the Strucker watch, you know, which is yes. a, which sort of Baron Von Strucker from the comics. And I believe there's a Strucker in one of the movies or something in the facility that they're. I don't even her. want to talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, heavy-handed, and and they they did it in a shitty way. They killed him in like two seconds. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was horribly handled. But that is uh, that is the sort of thing that that's that's part of uh, you know Baron von Strucker's personnel. You can't actually kill him that easy. You can shoot him, but you know he's he'll come back. You know he's he's, he's technically immortal, if I'm recalling correctly. You know, so they're probably playing into the the movie, and it may be a correction of a thing that happened in the movies. You know, where it's like, oh yeah, you know, you you, you killed him off. You know, he regenerated. It happens slower in the in the Marvel universe. Uh, and uh, and it's him just basically messing with them, or who's uh, reacquired Wanda and you know is doing more experiments again. You know, uh, so 
that's our best hint, I think, is that perhaps potentially it's it's Strucker. Other than that, you know, could be could be AIM, which again, you know, you, you mentioned uh, that along with the the sword stuff we were talking about that. Uh, the gentleman in the beekeeper suit. Well, that's an AIM outfit. It's it's essentially just a beekeeper suit. So, I I'm not 100 percent sure whether or not they're doing this on purpose or if it was a uh, not Doctor Who moment, but the his coworker, the Indian gentleman. Yeah, uh, he is in because I was looking it up because I was I was like he looks super familiar. So I went to just look up who it was. He is also in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He's in like two episodes. Hmm. So I don't know if he's an agent or if he's just a character because I didn't watch that show. I well, couldn't couldn't bring myself to watch it. Neither could I. It's it's such a bad show. But, you know, and, and y'all can debate that in the comics, but my point stands. <laughs> like, but uh, it, the, the show is unwatchable. But, you know, that that could be another hint that, okay, yeah, these are S.H.I.E.L.D. agents or, you know, well, S.H.I.E.L.D. was disbanded, so I guess he'd potentially be an agent of S.W.O.R.D. now, which would make sense. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's a S.W.O.R.D. agent who wandered in and got caught up in the illusion. You know, so that would make some sense. And also, the whole multiverse thing you were saying earlier also plays into the, you know, the leaks or the the, the rumors that uh, Chris Evans uh, has signed up to play Captain America one more time in, in, a, in a role, you know, wasn't elaborated on, but, you know, in one Marvel picture, probably not starring in it. So if we're doing a multiverse thing of some kind, especially if it involves the Struckers, especially if it's, you know, like you were hinting at, Spencer, like it might be farther back in the timeline, uh, then we could see classic Cap. You know, if there's a time travel element yeah. to this. It yeah, definitely. You know, this has nothing to do with what we were just talking about, but Anna Gasteyer as Agnes is my favorite side character by far. <laughs> it is <laughs> like every time she like, like swoops on screen and like is leaning back and like pops. She is a very physical comedian, like with her body movements. Dude, every time she comes on screen, I just start laughing. I, I like her a lot. I loved her on SNL. I've, I've liked her in a bunch of other, you know, movies she's been in as the side character and everything, but she is, I, I love her character. It makes me laugh. Well, that's a that's a good character to talk about, honestly, because she could be incredibly significant to this this show and uh, and well, what's what's going on? Because uh, in the comics, she's uh, and she is playing that role well, by the way, very well. Like, but uh, hold on, it's it's not her. <laughs> that's that's not the person. Well, whoever's mm-hmm. playing the role is playing the role well. You know, so Catherine Hahn. Catherine Hahn. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! It is. She got the same eyes and they, yeah, they they have a very oh. similar look. Very Never mind, similar. she's just as funny. It's the chick from Step Brothers, but like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's super funny too. So, but the way she was like squinting her eyes reminded me of Anna Gasteyer, which she's funny too. But Catherine Hahn has been in some of my other favorite movies. <laughs> I've seen Step Brothers, yeah. probably but, probably thirty times. <laughs> But yeah, th- this character is likely uh, Agatha Harkness, which is a, a good friend of Wanda's, and you know seems to, you know she 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 appe- she's appeared in both timelines. Like we've gotten new characters and you know adapted old ones, but she was there from the beginning. So you know my thought is she might have a idea of uh, of what's going on here, but know that she can't outright just tell Wanda what the issue is. You know, it's, like maybe. Maybe she realizes, like, that, yeah, because Wanda's so powerful, you can't just tell her she'll rebuild the reality or recreate the illusion or reinforce it like she did with that uh, that agent of Soar that came out of the uh, out, out of the out of the sewers. You know, she just like reset everything. I just saw a spoiler. Not really. Uh, I'm looking at the IMDb. That's I had that up on my screen. Yeah, I thought so. That's we not... heard we heard to go. Oh, shit, and I'm like, okay, well, what happened? Uh, no, Cat <laughs> Dennings is going to be in the show. And she played Ooh. Darcy the yeah. from the Thor movies, um, and so, uh, so that character is going to be a part of this. I'm going to get off IMDb. I'm not <laughs> well, I, just, <laughs> I posted a picture in the. Chat. I, I know they look. That's yeah. like sisters. Absolutely. Yeah. I was wow. like, as soon as you said it, I was like, "Yep, it probably is." <laughs> the 
like uh, the commercials. I, I I can't wait to I see what. Those. Well, yeah, well, I'm sure we'll get several more. Uh, there's seven more. You know, it's nine episodes, so we got seven more, and I figure at least the next three or four will probably still be sitcom world. Um, but yeah, the Stark Industries Toast Mate, and then the Strucker, <laughs> the Hydra Watch. I yeah, I really I enjoyed that. Um, the, speaking of the commercial, though, notice in the um uh, the ow. Damn it! Just punched myself in the nuts trying to pull a rope away from the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you elaborated. I was trying. I was trying to picture that in my oh, head. That, I was that. like, "Why? <laughs> oh, that, and how? That was yeah. that was uncomfortable." <laughs> oh, okay. um, but the. Uh, the <laughs> do you need a minute? Do you need me to talk for a little while? Uh, the Stark, the art, the Stark Industry um, commercial, the. It's all black and white. Most of episode two was black and white, except for the little um, the drone or helicopter thing. But remember, the toaster kept having that blinking red light. So I don't know if that's something she was seeing that was cutting through the reality or if that was something else, because there wasn't any other color in that episode, except for that one blinking light, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and it and it zoomed, it panned to it and focused there for a while, you know. So, like that makes me think, like you're saying, that potentially, like that represents something that's actually happening in in reality, you know, outside of, you know, this uh, false reality that Wanda has created. The biggest uh, in the two episodes, clearly outside the big of her Sherman show. <laughs> That's the biggest, um, <laughs> most important thing is she's pregnant. She's pregnant at the end of the second episode. And I don't want to go too much into it simply because we'll see how the show does it. But we will say in the comics, she has kids. So, so that, you know, are they, it looks like they're setting that up. And that is a big, big deal if they are. Um, like I said, we have plenty of time to talk about it in later episodes as we see where it goes. But just what do you what do you think about that? I was curious as to to me, it's going to show how she has been in reality, because just like the last two episodes, like you said, it's said it's shifting decades. So it's going from one time frame to another. And then this if if you walked you know, out of your house, Brian, today, and I saw you, and then I saw you the next day, and you were six months pregnant, I would have questions. So, not just because that would be, you know, uh, I guess genetically impossible, but if, you know, with her, her going from no baby to being six months pregnant the next day, as a friend, like, her, you know, Agnes and them are going to have questions, but Will they? I don't because think they, it, I think the way that reality, saying. yeah, <laughs> because the house is changing constantly. So I think as each, this is just my guess, as each reality shifts, it, everyone shifts with it, I think. That's yeah, just my, my guess. It just comes into, that's what their new reality my, is. My so bigger, their question, new reality would be her being pregnant. My bigger question with the, with the, with the, the, the pregnancy is if in fact they are going comic book, uh, and the way reality keeps changing, there's a chance that by the end of this show, not only will she have a kid or kids, um, but they could be grown or in their teen, their teens. You know what I mean? Like we could do a. Oh, we, that's a good point. Yeah, they we could, could fast track these characters and have them. Yep. Older. Well, well, I know you don't want to go into it, but let's. We might as well just <laughs> say the thing you've danced around it so much. You know that uh, that. At this place in time in the Marvel universe, they they have they have teenage kids, you know, and that could potentially play into a another Marvel property. Yeah, absolutely. They're they're setting the pieces for um, a, another Marvel property, and these characters would absolutely be there. Um, so I, we don't have to I, say names, but we, I, can well, we say can't. I, just, I just know X Men. There's no mutants in the current. X Men are in the current Marvel it's not even, universe because it, it was owned separately. It was just one of those like I, I didn't. Um, it'll probably come up every single week, and I just don't want to talk about Wiccan every single week. <laughs> so, <laughs> great character, but and speed, 
but um well yeah we'll we'll, we'll talk about them, that, that I was, guess, yeah. sparingly but, but you know, it was I, just the first little hint of it and i was like okay cool we'll see we'll see where they're going with this but then i thought with the with the reality warping there's you know young avengers and there there's certain things that they could happen in the next couple of years they could fast track that stuff they're setting it up you have um all these characters coming into play now all these young heroes and i i think they are setting something up it certainly seems like it you know because we we have um we have kate bishop hanging out with hawkeye well kate kate's his daughter and his daughter named kate and he's teaching her archery and everything um in, in this version of the uh marvel universe is it his daughter in this version I believe I it's his daughter. Yeah, because they were on the farm and everything, and you know, he, Hawkeye has his secret family. I don't know why he has a secret uh, family. It's weird. Like, but you know, I think his daughter is Kate, and you know, when the snap happens, it's. I think he's left with her as a single father. We have a we have a scene where he's showing her how to shoot a bow and everything, and you know, so I guess that'll be the the Marvel Universe's version of Kate. You know, we have uh, Billy and his, his brother. I can't remember Wiccan's brother's name. You know. Speed. It's Speed and Wiccan. I don't know their um I can't remember their real names. Right. Real name, but um Yeah. I hate Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> we also have um Ant Man's daughter. Yeah. Uh we have who else? They recasted have? her. They said yeah, they recast. They, so yeah. they plan on doing stuff with her. And then you have some other younger heroes coming up. You have Miss Marvel coming up. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, Ironheart uh, is coming soon. So, so there are a lot of young heroes. Some older, you know, from decades past. Some newer characters. But basically, you have a bunch of young heroes uh, coming and, in the scene. And you know, and that's interesting because I was thinking with uh, the mention that. Uh, you know, that Chris Evans was coming back to reprise this role as Captain America for something. Uh, my first thought with that with that was, was like, especially since we all love those comics, and I think we're all fans of Captain America. Uh, well, very I know much. we are. Like, but, uh, you know, I would very much like a, uh, a series or a miniseries, you know, just with him for a while, which, which, was, which takes place during uh, World War II. You know, we get a little bit of, that those classic cap comics with the uh, with the espionage and everything, and we can even get you know bits of because uh, because there is a legacy character. If we go back to that as well, you know we have the events of uh, Truth, perhaps even, and uh, you know which is a comic that that shows that you know there were perhaps other people that they they experimented on before Steve Rogers, and you know from that we could get uh, the Younger Avengers version of I can't remember what was his name, the Patriot, I think it was. Yes. Yeah, we could get we could get I the Patriot from that. It was a cool <laughs> outfit. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're <clears throat> I think they're they are uh, setting up a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, the, the two episodes in, uh, I'm definitely gonna you know like I said we're gonna be watching every single week. What, what do you think about the length? The last my last real question. What do you think about the length of the episodes? Um, Kevin Feige had come out and stated that one of the things he loves about streaming is there are no limits or rules as to how long an episode is. He can break it up any way he wants based on the story. So you may get something like Falcon Winter Soldier. You may get, and we don't know this for sure, but you may get longer episodes, maybe an hour, but you only get like four. Where a show like this, they're cutting it into half hours, but you're going to get nine. But, you know, sort of there's the artistic side of it where, you know, sort of reflective of the old sitcoms being about that 26 minute, you know, episode length. Um, but, yeah, how did y'all feel about two episodes both coming in at just under half an hour each? I think what you just said is key to that. Um, when you talk about this being set up like a sitcom with the underlying mystery, I think the first half being those, you know, 25 minutes is probably what it'll be. I don't know if the later episodes, if they'll keep the same like length format or if they will, you know, stretch it out as the kind of tone changes. But uh, my only complaint with the length of time is the 17 minutes at the end of every episode for credits. <laughs> credits. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I watched good God, got a lot of credits. In episode two, I actually watched it because I wanted to see why. Uh, and they give a full production credit to i think like five different languages so i don't know if they're dubbing over it in 
uh, foreign languages or if it's just probably it, it, because the length of the because it said the Brazil crew and it had a whole crew for Brazil and then it showed up. I didn't pay enough attention to see if it said Wanda and then it gave like a name uh, because then it would be, you know, voice acted over. But regardless of whether it was voice acted or whether it was translated, it's still got to be all of all of that still has to be done. But I've never seen that put in credits before. You know, I've watched a lot of movies and they don't say, you know, our team who produced this for our Chinese audience. These are the people who did it. Uh, so I think as much as I hate watching seven minutes of credits, because I was just curious, uh, I think it is really cool to give everyone credit who worked on it and to show those people. I think it's, it's a, you know, a big standing ovation, high five to Kevin Feige, but I, I didn't want to watch seven minutes of credits. (laughs) (laughs) Their, their, um, their last little investor call, there was a big emphasis on, you know, they're pushing to international markets and they want Disney plus to be as, you know, a global a brand as anything else Disney does. So, so uh, yeah, I definitely could see the, you know, representing all the different, uh, credits for the different languages. Well, well in that case, like uh, many of their products, are we like that makes me wonder if we're going to get like different edits for different markets? I am very that you know. I don't know that, but you're possibly because we do know that there are this the way the streaming services are in foreign markets are different. Matter of fact, some of them I think c- they get different shows and stuff. There's you know what I mean. There's certain things that not everybody is getting across you- the board. So you that, know that that's possible. When you said that, it just reminded me. Uh, Netflix lost the rights to The Office, the U.S. version of The Office in the states, but they just added it to Netflix in the U.K., Canada, Australia. <laughs> so they just added it yeah. in other countries. Uh, same thing with Fresh Prince. You know, I've been bitching about in the U.S. them not having a streaming service with Fresh Prince. Uh, I play uh, the Walking Dead Road to Survival game one of the guys on my faction or whatever is from Australia. And he's like, dude, we've had it here for forever. So it's been on Netflix in other countries. So like you said, there's different markets have different shows. So I would. I was going to say not only that, but we've, we've seen in the past with the, with the movies that, uh, that there's different cuts of, uh, of, of the Marvel movies, entire scenes added in foreign markets or cut out of foreign markets. Yeah, you're right. Or changed. Like the yeah, yeah. writing has changed because they showed, I watched that on YouTube where it was something that Cap wrote down. It was like a list of things that he was wanting to do or whatever. And depending on what country it was in, his list was different to apply towards like their culture. And it was weird because I'm like, he's, why would they change that? But it's because they wanted to appeal to their fans. And it was they change a lot of different stuff. So like you said, there's a lot of different cuts in a lot of different countries. I don't mind when it appeals to the fans. My, I don't want to get into it, but my concern is when it has to appeal to the government. <laughs> well, True, yeah. That's yeah. a whole other topic. Well, yeah, um, that, that was the thing I was worried about too. When you, when you said that, the fact that it's like, Oh, okay. So the content, because we want to appeal globally and there are government concerns or concerns with other governments about certain content we're just going to cut certain things or maybe, you know, maybe Agatha's character even because, you know, it is tied up and she is tied up. And like, if she is the character that we think she is, is related to like witchcraft and everything, you know, and I mean, she is a witch, uh, in the comic books, uh, potential spoiler if I'm right, but we don't know if I'm right yet. But if that's the case, then, you know, in certain markets, uh, she might not be. It, it may just, you know, they may play it differently. But it's a little hard to do that when we have Doctor Strange already. But, you know, still. Uh, well, I, I, I think you're yeah. getting where I, I, I'm going with that one, given that we've edited, that we've seen, like, different properties edited for that reason because of, like you said, uh, certain governments don't want to see these things in media or don't allow these things. And they're trying to go in a global place. So I'd be curious to see what becomes of characters like that in a different market, or if we get a a version of these characters that can be played as they are in the comics here, but you can easily edit it to sound like it's something else that's going on. Uh, if it's playing in, you know, I don't know, let's say anywhere else, really. 
Yeah, it'll it'll definitely be interesting to see, and it's something that because we're global, they they're not going to be able to hide it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, you know, in other words, everybody's going to know if somebody's getting a edited version of something. Um, I think particularly the comics fans, you know, because they'll notice that certain things just certainly don't make sense for for characters that they've seen uh, since their childhood. But, but yeah, um, anything else regarding the first two episodes of WandaVision? They're not naming the episodes. I thought that was odd. They're literally just episode one, episode two. Hmm. Well, I think that's probably to give less away. <laughs> yeah. Because if I think if they mentioned anything, then even prior to the episode, like in the first episode, I didn't know that the uh, change in decades was going to happen. I mean, I watched the preview and I knew that it was going to progress, but I didn't know how quickly or what was going to happen. So if they would have alluded to any of that, I think that that probably would have been uh, probably spoiled a little bit. So and like you said, for them to have so much that they've kept secret. It doesn't surprise me that they're not even naming the episode to try and keep everything kind of under wraps. Yeah, no, no episode titles. Hmm. Yeah, that Uh, is interesting. Anything else, guys? No, sir. Well, you know, I just want to say I do think that the uh, the runtime of these and is is partially, you know, potentially due to the fact that that we are starting out with such a drastically different as such a drastically different show, and you know, maybe they feel like. well, I feel like they feel like they're going to lose people potentially, you know, during the first few episodes of this. And then we'll hit that point, you know, that mid season point where there's a twist and things are being pieced together. And I, and I think that's to make it more digestible when that happens. And, and here's hoping that pays off. Cause you know, you mentioned a few people in your life uh, before we started recording that, you know, weren't digging it now. And once we get to that point, if it turns into anything, like I think it's going to turn into, they'll probably want to jump in and this makes it a little easier to do that. I think. Yeah. I I know some people that loved it and some people that did not at all. So yeah, I, I, yeah, definitely. Um, I've seen varying degrees. There's a few publications even that typically love the MCU stuff, gave it like lukewarm scores. So it's, I've seen tens, I've seen six, sevens, you know, it's, um, but yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll see how it, goes forward um all right cool uh a lot of content on the channel everybody if if you're still listening um thanks for listening and we will see y'all next time bye bye